Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin, and we're going to be discussing the social risk. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com, where you can, of course, get access to the charts that we're gonna be talking about in this video. The prices of ITC Premium are gonna be going up after the halving for new subscribers, but you can lock in the lower rate between now and then. So make sure you check that out. Links in the description below. The social risk right now is 0.262. If you're unfamiliar with the social risk, it is insight into interest within the cryptoverse by tracking social trends, both on YouTube and on X, formerly Twitter. So we're looking at YouTube views, YouTube subscribers to various crypto YouTube channels, and then followers to various analysts, exchanges, and layer ones on X. And when you look at all of them, we overlay all of those individual components. That's what they look like. And then what we do is we then combine them into one and it looks like this. So the social risk goes from zero to one. When it's near zero, it means there's very little interest in the cryptoverse. When it's near one, it means there's a lot of interest in the cryptoverse and you're probably looking at a market cycle top. Right now, I'm arguing that if this is going to play out like last cycle, then it could still be quite, a, quite some time before you see the social risk durably go up like this. It doesn't mean it won't. It just means it could be much further off. Like it might not happen immediately, just like in 2019, right? It, it didn't happen immediately. Now, again, it goes from zero to one. So zero is low risk, one is high risk. Right now, we're sort of, you know, we're, we're at 0.262. Now, for a long time, we've only tracked about 10 channels when looking at, at YouTube subscribers and YouTube views and about the same number of Twitter accounts. But we've actually expanded that now, and I wanna show you what the new charts look like. So if we go over to charts, and we go to YouTube subscribers to all of these YouTube channels, so instead of only looking at 10, now we've got, I think, somewhere between 30 to 40, a lot more YouTube channels. This was a commonly requested thing. A lot of people said, hey, can you add this channel? Can you add that channel? So I basically just went through a lot of the recommendations that I saw and I was like, all right, well, we'll just add a lot of these channels so that hopefully we can get better insight, right? Better insight into what's going on, um, you know, in the cryptoverse, what's going on in the retail space, are people interested in, you know, some of these channels um, are, it's taking a little bit of time to load. Some of these channels are, are you know, Bitcoin only channels. Some of them are, you know, they focus on altcoins. There's like a, a different array of channels that we have. So we're not looking at only one specific thing. And so if we go look at all these different channels, if it ever decides to load, um, there it is. We look at all these different channels, you can see that it's actually gone up quite a bit over the last few months. But ever since early March, subscribers have been sort of dropping back down as price has not really moved. Okay, now what's interesting is that with well, one caveat we only have data for the new channels three up to three years ago so you can kind of see there's a period where we don't have as many channels we only have like 10 or 11 channels and then right here we have a lot more it's because we can only get the data so far that we can find three years back so unfortunately that's just something we have to live with at this point um, but you can see kind of like what it looks like since then at these highs which did include these other channels you can see that these these channels were getting about 60,000 new subscribers a day on average. Right now, they're getting about 7,000. Okay, so about an order of magnitude difference. Not that long ago, though, we did hit that 20,000 subscriber level. Now, we have the same chart, uh, but for YouTube views to those same crypto YouTube channels. And so by looking at YouTube views, it, it, it also gives you some insight into like, are the people that are already subscribed, are they still watching? Um, and if you look at it like this, you can see there was a bit of an uptick recently back up to 2 million. The high over here was around 4 million, but it has sort of fallen off recently as the price hasn't really done anything uh, for the last month or so, right? You can see that Bitcoin found this local top at least March 
mid-March. Price hasn't really done anything since then. And so because it hasn't done anything, you can see that views have, have sort of fallen off here, right? They've, they've been cut in half, in fact. And we've also done something similar with Twitter followers. So we've added a lot of new uh, crypto X accounts that, you know, that a lot of you guys are probably familiar with. And you can look at something very similar, very, very similar to YouTube views, but over for, for X or formerly Twitter and see that, you know, at these peaks over here, we have this data going all the way back to 2017. At these peaks over here, you can see that in fact, uh, these new followers to these Twitter accounts essentially did a pretty decent job, right? Did a pretty decent job of actually marking the top when that topped, right? You can see it right there. Um, but, you know, ever since then, you know, it fell down a lot. And over here, basically, we had about 100,000 new followers to those crypto Twitter accounts in a single day. Now, they're averaging only a few thousand. And recently, it's actually negative. And the reason it's negative is I think there was something weird that happened on, on X where, like, it it basically gave a lot of people, like, a lot of people got a lot of new subscribers in, like, a day. It seemed like something weird was going on. And then, like, the next day, a lot of those subscribers were taken away. If you look at... Uh, at just my account, right? You can see there was a spike on it. Um, and I, I think we need to look at not a seven day moving average, but there was a spike here and then there was a big move to the downside. I mean, I'm not really sure what happened there, but you can see it across a lot of the different channels, right? Like if you look at, at Altcoin Daily's channel, you'll see it. If you look at my channel, you'll see it. If you look at, at Coin Bureau, like it seemed to be like a, a something, you know, completely Twitter wide, right? Like it happened to a lot of these accounts on Twitter. And I'm not really sure why, but you, you can see it sort of across the board there on a lot of those different accounts, including my own. Um, but because that happened, it's now kind of messed with the, uh, the social risk, at least in the short term. Because if you look at, at Twitter followers to say analysts or exchanges, it, it caused this like artificial spike that probably shouldn't really be there. But it is there, so we live with it. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna take it out. If you look at the social risk, though, you can see that while it did get that pop up into the 0.4 to 0.5 wristband, it's actually come right back down. One of the things that's interesting, we, we like to tie a lot of these things that we talk about over to monetary policy. And I know a lot of people have spent a long time sort of debating that monetary policy might not be as useful for the cryptoverse. I think it is, and I think the fact that the Bitcoin dominance has gone up once again and put in new cycle highs is evidence that monetary policy really does affect the cryptoverse, despite many people's best attempt to try to explain that it doesn't. Um, but if you look at, at monetary policy as it relates to the social risk, you'll actually find quite an interesting trend, which gives more evidence to suggest that we are, you know, in a, in a quantitative tightening high interest rate period where social risk, while it does go up sometimes, it still just kind of fades back down because we're still not in QE, we're still not in low rates. If you look at the social risk in 2018, you can see that it bottomed right here, right? What's interesting about where this bottomed, and if you pull up Bitcoin and you look at late 2018, that was where the Fed paused. Now look at where social risk found this low in September. When did the Fed pause rates, right? In like July, July, you can see right here, July was that that last one, and then August um, we had you know we had a pause. So you'll see that in both cases, social interest found a low when the Fed paused, and it makes sense because a lot of times when the Fed pauses, risk assets rally for a while because they they're they're celebrating the fact that they're we're done with rate hikes, right? And when that happens, prices go up, and when prices go up, retail comes back. And you can see that retail has come back to some degree, just like they did in 2019. However, there is an issue where what if, you know, they came back just like they did over here, but then what if we sort of enter into something like this where social interest sort of fades for it? Because you can see the minute that price doesn't even do anything, social risk just drops like a rock, right? It drops like a rock. Whereas over here, when price really wasn't doing much and just kind of going sideways, social risk was still going up. So this was during low interest rates in QE. This was during high interest rates in QT. And so when you're in high interest rates in QT, you really need price action to just keep going up on almost a daily basis to keep people interested. Um, otherwise, people just start tuning out again. And you can kind of see that's what's happening again. It doesn't mean that Bitcoin can't go higher, of course. I mean, until all Bitcoin pairs break down, it could theoretically do that. 
Remember, last cycle, Bitcoin topped out when all Bitcoin pairs broke down. And we are getting close, but it hasn't happened yet, right? We are getting relatively close to them breaking down just like they did over here, but it hasn't happened yet. And when they do break down, assuming that they do, I imagine the Fed will cut new not too long after that, just like they did last cycle. But the reason we can tie all this together is to say, well, look, if, if we are about to enter into a phase like this as we get into the summer, I don't really know what's going to happen in April specifically, but if this kind of happens in the summer where we just sort of price just kind of like moves around a little bit, maybe some lower highs or something in May and June, and social risk falls off the cliff, the reason why that's important is because if you go over to the workbench and pull up Bitcoin dominance, and we look just at Bitcoin dominance without stable coins and add social risk onto this chart, one of the things you'll notice is that as the social risk stays low, Bitcoin dominance still goes up. And Bitcoin dominance still went up even after the social risk had this rally after rate, after the after the Fed paused rates in 2019. And then the social risk fell off, but Bitcoin dominance still went up. And Bitcoin dominance topped out after the social risk sort of came back over here and, and you know, more or less put in a double bottom, right? So what I'm suggesting here is that as we get out into the summer and as we get closer and closer to rate cuts, you might actually see the social risk fall back in to the 0 to 0.2 range where altcoins, you know, go to whatever lows they're going to go to on their Bitcoin pairs. I've often said I don't think they're done bleeding against Bitcoin. And you can see very clearly that that has been true. Today, Bitcoin dominance put in the highest daily close that it's had for the entire cycle, right? This is the highest daily close since April 2021. ETH Bitcoin put in its lowest daily close since... April of 2021. ADA Bitcoin put in its lowest daily close since January of 2021. DOT Bitcoin put in its lowest close ever. Matic Bitcoin has put in its lowest daily close since April of 2021. So with all of that in mind, with all that in mind, it sort of seems like it is in fact playing out like last cycle everything is just delayed by about three quarters, right? Because we know that last cycle, all Bitcoin pairs collapsed in, in the summer of 2019. It now seems like we're potentially doing the same thing about three quarters later. So it's a very interesting setup. And I'm wondering if it's just going to play out exactly the same way where these all Bitcoin pairs break down. And the reason they break down is because retail just isn't back yet in the way that people think they're going to be back. I think a lot of people think, well, Bitcoin new all-time highs. You know, they think that means alt season. But the reality is we're still in quantitative tightening. We're still at a high interest rate macro environment. And so rather than retail immediately returning, they just leave again. And therefore, dominance of Bitcoin just keeps going up. So it makes a lot of sense when you think about it is if you want to see social risk go up or if you want to see Bitcoin dominance go down durably, you need a lot of retail investors to come and frankly buy your altcoin bags. Who are we kidding? That's what you need. But if you're not getting that, if, 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 if retail just they kind of tune in when the price moves, when they immediately tune out, if price stabilizes, then you don't have that same purchasing power to buy up the altcoins to durably send Bitcoin dominance back down. Therefore, if you don't have that, as long as the social risk is low or trending down, then the Bitcoin dominance generally goes up, right? And, and you can see here that the social risk topped in May of 2021. Now you might say, well, Ben, I hate to break it to you, but Bitcoin dominance didn't bottom until you know, September of 2022. While that may be true, including stable coins, you can actually calculate out Bitcoin dominance excluding stable coins and see that it actually bottomed in May of 2021 <clears throat> precisely when the social risk topped. So Bitcoin dominance tops when social risk finds these lows, potentially these secondary lows over here, <clears throat> and it bottoms, Bitcoin dominance bottoms when the social risk tops. It's kind of interesting, right? And it makes a lot of sense when you think about it, right? You need retail investors to, to be interested in alts to make the dominance go down durably. If you don't have that, then you know all the all the moves down by dominance 
they just end up eventually breaking out because you still don't have retail coming back. So that's why social risk is so interesting. And my base case, again, I don't know if Bitcoin might get another move into the halving. It certainly could, considering that all Bitcoin pairs have not broken down yet, but there's no guarantee. Remember, ETH USD topped out a month before the merge. Um, but if we do see kind of like a, a summer lull again, that kind of seems to be a, a, a repetitive thing in the cryptoverse where summer gets, gets here and then it gets kind of boring. If that happens and you see the social risk just sort of drop back down into these lows, then that might actually correspond to Bitcoin dominance to, uh, topping out. But I don't think we're there yet. I, I think we still need a few more months to get there to see the social risk come back down. And it's this move, sorry, a bug just landed on me. It's this move here where it comes back down, which really makes people question, you know, all the all the altcoin bags that they're holding. And then it kind of, you know, it, it gets kind of overwhelming. And and then they, you know, they finally convert to Bitcoin. And by the time the last person actually converts to the Bitcoin, then the Bitcoin dominance finally tops out. And then altcoins start to take back over um, for a while. But again, I don't think we're there yet. I, I still think you're likely going to see the social risk go down into the summer. Even if Bitcoin does push to new highs, I think the social risk is likely going to go down into the summer months, um, just like it did over here as, as, as rate cuts arrived. And as that happens, you should see a lot of these alts break support against Bitcoin. I know they haven't yet done it collectively, like alt Bitcoin pairs haven't broken support. But we are getting relatively close. And individually, a lot of these altcoins are breaking support, right? ETH Bitcoin, while it hasn't had a weekly close below 0.049, it is getting relatively close to doing so. ADA Bitcoin, I just made a video on this. I said I think it's going to break support. It has. Dot Bitcoin has broken support. Matic Bitcoin has broken support. So it seems like a lot of the individual altcoins are breaking support. It's just a matter of time before total three minus USDT divided by Bitcoin breaks support. Others, Bitcoin, which a lot of people have used to try to be more optimistic on the altcoin market, today had a wick down where it gave up all the gains that it had since October of 2023. So you can see just how quickly a lot of these altcoins can get wiped out. Their, their Bitcoin gains can get wiped out practically overnight um, when, when you get these washout periods. And it, and it makes a lot of sense because last cycle, others, Bitcoin dropped 60%, rose 60, and then dropped another 60 as rate cuts arrived. What happens if we do the same thing? Drop 60, go up 60, and then drop 60 as rate cuts arrive. As the social risk goes back down into the summer and the Bitcoin dominance goes up to, to um, this, is in, this is excluding stables, but including stables as the Bitcoin dominance goes up to that 60% level, right? I've said for a long time, at 56% dominance, ETH Bitcoin should get a weekly close below 0.049. It seems like it's all lining up, right? We're getting a close to 56% dominance. We already went above it, but until we get a weekly close, it doesn't matter. Just like ETH Bitcoin needs to get a weekly close below 0.049 for it to mean something. It seems like it's all lining up. It all seems to be lining up right around the halving. We do know that, that April does tend to be a time where Bitcoin can get some excitement and then it cools off into May. We've seen that happen. We saw it happen in 2021. We saw it happen last year. We saw it happen in 2013. If something like that were to happen and, and Bitcoin sort of cools off into the May timeframe and social risk goes back down, then I think everything we've spoken about over the last two and a half years finally comes to fruition um, in this final crescendo where all Bitcoin pairs break down, the social risk goes back down, social risk potentially puts in like, you know, a double bottom sometime later this year as Bitcoin dominance tops out. And then, and then finally, we get to rate cuts where where things turn around for the altcoin market, at least on their their Bitcoin pairs. But I think that's kind of a way that you tie in the social risk into the cryptoverse, you know. And I, I think it's fascinating. I don't really think um, a lot of people use, you know, this sort of stuff. But how how fascinating is it that social risk topped when Bitcoin dominance bottomed? And how fascinating is it that last cycle Bitcoin dominance topped? after social risk sort of put in a, a double bottom on the secondary bottom. That's when Bitcoin dominance topped. We put in the first low on social risk as rate cuts arrive, or as, as, the, as the Fed pause rates. I'm arguing that it comes back down again as rate cuts arrive and does something like this. And then somewhere over here, somewhere over here later on this year, 
you know, Bitcoin dominance theoretically tops as the social risk goes back down into those lower levels um, as, you know, as those rate cuts come in because the Fed's trying to figure out how much damage they did. I think, you know, I'm trying to tie it all together. You know, I, I don't want there to be, you know, anything that we're not, because I mean, it really is a holistic view, right? You're, you're talking about retail interest, but you also want to tie it over to monetary policy because we know at this point, you know, there's been arguments about it forever, but I think we can safely say at this point that monetary policy does affect the cryptoverse. And I know it seems obvious, right? And it should be obvious, but there's been a lot of arguments by a lot of people that it doesn't. It's very clear that it does, right? Because yes, dominance has gone and put on a new high. And I think most of the people that were arguing that it didn't were saying dominance had already topped, and it hasn't, right? Dominance just put on a new high. It finally broke above uh, this this range here. And my guess is that dominance is going to go to 60% um, in you know sometime over the next several months, right? Um, probably not going to get there immediately, but probably going to get there within you know within the next three to six months or so is my guess. As we'll see, 60% dominance as the social risk sort of comes back down and then that's where alt bitcoin pairs finally bottom out one thing to think about you know how we talked about the altcoin reckoning a lot i always said that the altcoin reckoning is not the devaluation of alt usd pairs it's the devaluation of alt bitcoin pairs right and if if alt bitcoin pairs haven't bottomed which has always been my base case that they're going to go down as bitcoin dominance goes to 60 percent if eth bitcoin is putting in new lows which it is and Ada Bitcoin is putting in new lows, which it is. And Matic Bitcoin is putting in new lows. And and um, Ave Bitcoin, I mean, it, it, you know, it's putting in new lows. A lot of these altcoins are putting in. BNB Bitcoin put in new lows back in in December. Um, Litecoin Bitcoin pretty close to putting in new lows. Uh, Link Bitcoin still has a little bit of a ways to go to get there. Dot Bitcoin putting in new lows. Right. If the altcoin reckoning is always about the devaluation of alts against Bitcoin. And now these alts are putting in new lows against Bitcoin during the same cycle, then it just means the altcoin reckoning never ended, right? I mean, isn't that, doesn't that stand a reason, right? If they're, if they're just putting in new lows. And again, we can't just say that, oh, it's just these altcoins that no one cares about. One of them is Ethereum, right? I mean, this is the second market, the second cryptocurrency by market cap, right? It's not just an alt, you know, it's not just an alt that you can say, oh, well, no one, you know, that doesn't matter. It does matter. It's been number two for a long time, for like six or seven years. So it does matter. And if this is the case, then it means that we are likely at this, sorry, we are at this phase of the cycle where ETH Bitcoin capitulates. And then somewhere down here, Bitcoin dominance tops out as the social risk bottoms. But we haven't done that yet, right? We're still trying to break support. I think we will. We'll go to 0.03 to 0.04. We'll find some support down there, and then we'll trim back up. That's my guess. And so I think it it really is. There's a lot of confluence, not only with monetary policy, but also with the social risk. And I do hope that you guys enjoy the fact that we have added new people to the social risk. That was something that a lot of you guys had asked for, um, or at least to the new YouTube views and the YouTube subscribers and the Twitter stuff and the, the X stuff, right? Um, and so now we have more people that you can track. And if you want to look at any of the individual channels, I'll just pick on myself. You can go do that. For instance, here, you can see there's a big drop off in my views uh, to really low levels, but it's because I didn't publish a video for like a week straight. I went out of town. I wasn't, I wasn't even looking at, at, at crypto uh, while I was looking at the ETH Bitcoin pair because um, I, was, I was thinking, all right, it's going to collapse. I'm on vacation. But no, I, I didn't put out a video for like a week. So you can see that, that that went down. But for a lot of the channels, right? I mean, that that's not there because they continue to make videos for that that week. So, but you can go look at that. Um, again, if you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe, give the video a thumbs up. And again, check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at IntoTheCryptoverse.com. We are going to be raising prices on new subscribers after the halving. Um, so if you want to lock in the lower rate, you can do so. Uh, between now and then, so basically over the next week or so. Thank you guys for tuning in. Subscribe. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.